So uh, you notice I'm wearing a blue polo, wearing polo blue cologne. Very nice. With a blue water polo ball and a blue tie, which just ties it together. <laughs> I noticed. Hey, guys. Welcome to the Real Quick Mike Swick Podcast, episode number 45. We have, I guess, two models. Thank you, buddy. On the show today. One, our co-host, Mark Bogutsky here, wearing polo blue. Thank so you. So might, you might, well, unless you read the title of this video, you probably know who the, the guest is today. Luke Rockhold, polo blue model, UFC light heavyweight now. Yeah. Me too. Yeah. I weigh in at 188 right now. Is that light heavyweight? No, 205. No. Oh, I'm still. Well, yeah. right. oh. Actually, it is. 188? Yeah, I can go yeah. 188. You, have, you, heard, you are light heavyweight. You'd be too heavy for middleweight. I think I'm looking uh, 186. Quite spiffy. Yeah, you look good. I like how you have your pants or your shorts rolled up. Well, this is 1999 Polo Blue. Oh, you went when back. I first a little retro. I like how your hair is <laughs> like on your head, literally. It's like. This is how those dickheads used to have it when we were in high school. So, I mean, the, the model assholes. Now I get it's all messy and Justin Bieber. But not crap. Luke. He's not. He's no, no, no. no he's he's cool. different. Of course, no. yeah. The other assholes, right? No, I'm talking about in 98. The way oh, they those had guys. It in yeah. Yeah. Now the models are cool. Luke was 14 in 98. So, okay. I <laughs> doubt he did it. But Wow, man. So, uh, so Luke is coming back for the second time. We had Javier on. Javier on? We had Javier on two times. Oh, yeah. Okay. I thought, I thought it was name of a water. <laughs> yeah, we. Uh, what? Yeah, that's our second guest. Okay. Second fighter. First, I mean, first fighter, but second guest. Yeah. That so Luke's repeat, coming back repeat, on. So. Give us an update from his camp in Florida with Henry Hoof. And uh, I guess uh, everything else, Luke Rockwell. Yeah. The whole Anthony. We'll cover Anthony Smith. I'm sure we'll cover, uh, you know, Jan Blackowitz. Obviously, he's fighting. Mm -hmm. You know, his move to, to middleweight. I think or, he's going to. Sorry, light heavyweight. I think he'll do really good, man, at, at 205. He's always been a really big 185er. And me being 185 when we were training together, he was so big, you know? Well, like myself, and that was when I was we're, actually we're cut big. dudes, you know? We're big guys. So <laughs> yeah. for him to go, you know, down to middleweight, I'm sure it takes a toll. So yeah, he's a big dude, man. And then, uh, you know, obviously I've seen him through his whole camp or his whole career training at AKA. And, you know, he's always, you know, had to worry about his diet and, and making that 185. He's big when he fights, but getting there is the problem, you know, when you're so big. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see him fight at 205. How do you see this fight going? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I think he's going to do really well, man. I think – I don't think he's – I don't think he's underrated, but like – Well, he's never fought in this division yet. But I'm just saying in general, I think he's obviously accomplished a lot. He's not like he, – yeah, he's not he's underrated, but record. I still think somehow he is underrated, if that makes sense, right? I don't think he's shown the best of his abilities, if, the, if, if you can follow me there. Um, I think there's a lot to Luke Rockhold that, that he hasn't shown and that people haven't seen yet. And I think if they saw it, they would respect him a lot more as a fighter because it's like, I mean, I, to train with this guy and to see how he trains and fights. I mean, you've seen him in, well, you, yeah. you just missed him in Thailand, but you saw him here. Obviously. I saw him in San Jose. Yeah, yeah, and in San Jose he, as well. He took me down. I mean, he trains no crazy hard. He's crazy good. I mean, the way he uses his body for submissions and, and grappling is really, it, it's next level. Well, well, for you, being actually, I mean, one of the first guys to do different weight classes because yeah. You know, you are the first video game to have two different weight classes, just so you know. Fighter on a video game. Fighter on a video. Well, yeah. I mean, they've, they've had, there's been fighters with mixed weights before me, but, but not on the video game. Well, just for the podcast, sake, we'll just problem. say I'm the first yeah, one. Yeah. yeah. So, like, obviously, when you're, you were 185, 170, how much easier is it, if that's the correct word, to train at 185 uh, than it would be to train at 170 to go all the way down? Yeah. Cause I, I did it reverse. Yeah. I did yeah. it backwards. I went back down. Um, and actually, I was at 205, so I had an well, exhibition, a pro to exhibition go. fight. Well, didn't you count were on my record. 202. Right? Yeah, I wasn't at 205. Yeah, you didn't quite hit 205. I think I may have been in the height of my training was 205 maybe. 225, 210 was like the, the most I've ever weighed kind of when I first started camp. So I wasn't like completely out of shape, but I was still like big and I didn't trim myself down to make middleweight. But in on Ultimate Fighter Season 1, I was 205. Or I was in the 205 division. I wasn't 205. Actually, no, yeah. fun fact on the show, the middleweights were actually bigger than me, a lot of them. Like Lieben, I think, was bigger than me. I think everybody, um, buddy, the heaviest I've ever not, seen. Not all of them, but. What, 208? Have you ever hit 210? I did, but not, not for a I long mean, period of time. Post fight. Yeah. But, I mean, I'm talking about during your, or when I knew you the first yeah. 20 years. Jeez. <laughs> yeah. So 205, um, I did 205 against Stefan Bonner on the Ultimate Fighter. It was a pro exhibition. It wasn't a pro fight, but, you know. And then I got in the Ultimate Fighter. I'm sorry, I got in the UFC from the Ultimate Fighter and did 185, my first five fights. And then dropped to 170. And it was different, you know, but I had to do it for health reasons. So I, I never had the luxury of doing it like Luke, yeah. where I kind of fit 
you know, I changed weight classes for my benefit. It was more not my benefit. I, would assume, I was at middleweight and had yeah. to drop to 70 because I couldn't eat. Because I mean, well, this is his first 205 fight, so I assume that he's enjoying it yeah, a little bit. That's yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. So. Same thing with uh, Daniel Cormier, you know. Yeah. Because like you said, you did not reverse, so it must have sucked because you had to train. Yeah. Damn, I mean, I, I don't want to say twice as hard again. I don't know, but yeah. I've never cut weight in my life because, I mean, look at <laughs> look at this. So, yeah. but yeah, man, it'll be uh, interesting to pick his brain a little bit, see what he's got going on. Yeah, no, it's going to be good. It's going to be good, man. And like, I haven't talked to him in a while, so it'll be cool. cool to we got to get him back out here Yeah, because I missed him. I tell you what, we had a really fun three days when he was here. The only problem was it was three days. He was only here three days. He was here three days, and we made such an impact, not only the people in Thailand, but in Phuket and in Thailand, and then also on the internet. He was featured in TMZ. Yeah, I know what you're talking we about. We broke headlines all over the world with his visit in Thailand. Should not we, for all the best reasons. Should we bring reasons. it up? Or? Nah, yeah, no. we'll let yeah, people yeah. Google it. Google it. <laughs> Google Luke Rockhold Thailand. You'll see what I'm talking about. Um, well, if he comes back, I'm going to make it worse yeah. for him. Yeah. So yeah. I'm kind of interested to see what he has. Like I said, we'll give him some uh, fight predictions from some upcoming fights. I have a new segment for him, too. Well, you don't like, even know about it. I'm going to try it out. a new segment for me. I'm going to try it out on the show for the first time. I didn't even tell you because I'm going to get your reaction, too. Huh. I'm probably bad at it, but. Well, I mean, I came up with a new co host. Headline. To figure out. We're going to start doing some headlines in our podcast. Okay. Well, then I podcast. got some new segments coming up then. Okay. Yeah, you right. won't even be in the room. <laughs> All right. Oh. Well, uh, mashed potatoes. You know what, what that is? No. Why would I know that? Google Tiger Woods mashed potatoes. Tiger Apparently Woods there's some asshole potatoes. going around. Yeah, I know this is completely off topic. Yeah, it is, but go ahead. There's some asshole going around that when Tiger Woods tees off, somebody just yells, mashed potatoes. Oh, really? It doesn't seem that funny, but he does it like 61 times, so it starts to get Why does funny. he get kicked out? Because you can say whatever you want once he hits it. You can't uh, talk before. Oh, gotcha. And usually it's people like, yeah, go get him. Yay, Tiger. Okay, okay. That's just what he says. But, I just I, I thought I mean I I, don't yeah. know. I just thought it was nice. What about him winning the Masters? It's Again. decent, huh? That's decent, man. That what was it a fifteen year, fourteen year, uh, a long time uh, gap in between that? What do you think Gillette, Gatorade, and AT and T are thinking now after they <sighs> dropped them? Probably not anything near <laughs> Nike saying like <laughs> that's off to Nike for that, you know? I Stick mean, he didn't. Okay, yes, it's a it's a shit move to cheat on your spouse. You know, no, of course, that's but, across the board, but it isn't. But it's it not a law-breaking the, thing. It isn't a you know? crime. You shouldn't. And it's you shouldn't not lose money over outside it. of. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I get it. When when you're an ambassador to a to a product, you want to be. You know, it's like when the president. He's he's also a chief citizen. He yeah. should be a good human being. Yeah, true, true. Which whenever Clinton and that but imagine, fat chick, he was do you remember banging. how like turned over the golf world went? When Tiger oh, went was to shit. It? He cheated on his. And that was his own private thing, and it's bad for a guy to do that. I get it, but he. He cheated in his own personal thing. It wasn't yeah. a crime, his own thing. Turned the whole golf world upside down, right? Yeah. Imagine for a second if they had Conor McGregor in <laughs> golf. Like, imagine that. What would that do? That shows you how strong and different, like, you know. Well, the sports are all. And flexible, yeah. I guess. MMA well, like, like is we talked we about. Have uh, Conor McGregor running around and doing crazy shit, throwing dollies through windows and, like, slapping phones out of people's hands and. and well, so kind you, of being a racist, you know, I guess, you, on the internet. I don't, I don't really like. Okay, here, here's I don't a, know here's how a, like a difference too. Because like we we talked about last podcast, the difference between using steroids in the NFL or the MLB or NBA compared to UFC. Yeah. You know it 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 differs with everyone, but I mean, if you have a sexual assault, like even just uh, you know, charged with it or oh, know, under suspicion about that actually, yeah. You know, Conor McGregor's getting away with it. Yeah. No big deal. Well, I'm not. I'm not trying to bag on Con or anything. Like using no, this no, as I'm a big just, I'm just using other in general. But the point is, when when uh, Tiger won, you know, it brings you back to that time because obviously you think about Gillette, AT and T, and Gatorade. That's nice. Yeah, there you go. Uh, and then you think about kind of what happened and how crazy people were acting about that. And it was just crazy news, unbelievable, and all that. And then you think about like our sport, you know, what we do, and you think about Connor and all that stuff, and you're like, wow, that's. It's not that bad, you know what I mean? Like, I mean, you think about the news and, and what the fighters do in our sports, way worse than what Tiger did, you know? Yeah. On average, like the the, the main top guys that screw off and do but stuff. But then again, when you're the best but, of the world at something, I mean, under a microscope. Yeah. And you kind of deserve it, you know? I mean, it's, you know, I mean, it's the fans that dictate how much money you make, basically. Yeah. And if you're a piece of shit in whatever sport you do, hey, you know, you gotta you gotta roll with the good and the bad, I guess. Yeah. You think we should get Luke on? Welcome to the podcast, Luke. Welcome back. Good to be back, boys. How you doing, man? You look like you're talent. at the beach right now. I'm, you know, I am pretty much at the beach. You're always at the beach. 
So are we. Stop W after training. Get a little lunch. So how was training today, buddy? It was good, man. I'm uh, feeling good. Feeling strong, feeling powerful, hitting people, moving people, shaking people, <laughs> breaking people. <laughs> That's nice. I've done neither. <laughs> so how how is your how is your normal routine day, I guess, training and living in, in Florida versus San Jose? Uh, I mean, I know you're from San Jose. I know what we did there. So it's like I'm trying to get a grasp of your daily life in Florida. I, I think it's, you know, for me, it's less distractions. I don't know so many people. And, and there's, the training is it's a more well-rounded training in a scenario for me. There's a there's, there's the strength and conditioning is, is something like I've never really implemented. And it's it's making it's paying off and you know, it's paying dividends. And so um Putting, putting my time in there and, and going back and forth with Henry and, and uh, Greg Jones and Kami, man. they got great wrestling coaches and, and a great striking system in place with Henry Hooft. So I'm, I'm yeah, Henry's, couldn't be happy. Henry said some good things about you, man, that you're one of the best uh, well-rounded fighters he's ever seen. There's so much I feel that you haven't been able to show yet that I've seen in the gym. And it sounds like from Henry Hoof, you're showing that much or more. feels different, man. I feel 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 free. You know, I think I think the weight, the latter, latter how you know stages of my my 185 pound career, I've been, I've sucked so much weight off. It's it's made me hesitant. It's it's taken away my power, and I'm not as I'm not as loose. You know, I've had to, I've had to be more tactical and pick and pop my shots. And where it's, you see me early on in my career, I'm you know I'm letting it go, and you know I have the power, and the, and I'm not completely drained to where I can perform better. Um, I think, I see myself. In that in that same kind of feeling, you know, mentally, I, I feel like I was like it's kind of like the early days of Strike Force. I just don't. I'm not thinking about my weight. I'm, I'm yeah. comfortable where I'm at, and uh, and I'm, I'm, I feel strong. I don't feel like anybody can really compete with me, move me. So it's a big difference in fight camp. Like as far as you're, you're not worried about your weight, so you're obviously a little bit heavier and more comfortable during your normal training, getting ready for the fight. Yeah. No, no, exactly. I mean, not not worried about weight. Not only that, it's like I've I got room to grow too. And and uh, getting in the gym and lifting weights and doing my thing, it's it's uh, feel fucking good. Good man, but you look good, man. I mean, not like in that way, but you look like you're happy. Well, and hey, hold on, how good do I look though? I, I better look good. I, I better look good. Or I might lose my polo contract. This guy over here might be. <laughs> this is our polo blue. For a while. It, it for a would blow guy. your mind how many people come up to the gym asking me for autographs, thinking I'm you. <laughs> It'd blow my mind too, because <laughs> yeah. I think it's none. But all right. Hey, I mean, how many six foot five guys can uh, rock the polo like I do, and you as well? Not many people can pull that pull it off over the shoulders, you know. I appreciate that, and I've sprayed that cologne on me about nine times tonight, hoping you can smell it, but. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> put some more do you remember the uh the post or the you know you did that for mike which was a great uh oh the recording uh christmas gift when he got me that then you made fun of me for stinking like shit and so i just want to thank you for that i appreciate it <laughs> my pleasure yeah i'm always looking out for it. so going to the polo thing how, how long is that for i mean how long are you going to be with polo uh, we got we got a great relationship going. We got some fun stuff planned for the summer. I'm sure um, getting into that whole surfing world. Uh, so it's uh, it's very authentic for me. I got all my friends in the surf world we're working with now and doing some cool stuff. So um, they, we are we have we have we've got a, we've got some years left. We got some years left on the deal, and, and we're expanding on different things. And so there'll be some there'll be some cool stuff coming coming out and. Uh, you just keep trying to change the game, you know? That's yeah, all. I, I That's see what it's all about. I see you literally everywhere because I go to Duty Free when I travel. And obviously I travel a little bit. And you you're in a video of it. He's in every Duty yeah. Free, like literally. So good for you, buddy. Yeah. I'm just wondering because, like, it's amazing that, dude, we've sparred so many times. Me and you and DC and you and Kane and you and Fitch and you and every. But it's amazing how many times you've been punched in the face and you end up the model. It's like I, I think AK has a, a little bit of credit there for chiseling you into a model, in, in my opinion, because like you're the final product of Chisel. 10 years of sparring and you're a polo blue model. So you're welcome, Luke. You're welcome. I think I landed most a few people, of those. Most people lose their contracts, right? Yeah. It's amazing, man. It's amazing. I look at that and do it for him. It's like we've heard this guy so many times. I never broke my nose somehow. Me neither. Yeah. I don't have a polo contract, but. I yeah, have. I've never <laughs> broke my nose before either. 
Can I ask? You know, I, I, I always say I made a, made a career off making people ugly. There you go. Well, as Who's long as you're doing good. it to other people, I guess. I, I do have to ask, did they come to you or did you like go to some casting call? Like, I don't know. how. Obviously, I don't know how it works. Look <laughs> at me. <laughs> Look at you. Well, I, that's the problem. I'm doing it all wrong, apparently. <laughs> so, <laughs> at least I smell good. Was it an email? Did they send you an email or give you a call or something, Luke? What happened when they discovered you? Uh, I, I, had, I had, they reached out to me through some, through, uh, people like we're at one of the events. I was, I was, uh, I was at one of Khabib's fights back in the day, and I was, uh, I was helping him in the back room. I met somebody, and then they uh, mentioned a meeting, and we had a meeting. I met with the people, heard them out, and uh, and we started working together. You know, they said they could do this, that, and uh, I'm not one to turn down a, uh, a paycheck for traveling and taking photos with supermodels. So it didn't really sound like a horrible idea. So you didn't I sign up. <laughs> so you didn't do that thing where you walk around with four thousand other people and scouts look at you and give you the nod like we did in high school, like everyone in America did in high school. That wasn't it. It was it was a little bit more official than that. <laughs> then they tell you got to pay for something like uh, Page Parks. Yeah, Page Parks. Yeah, they told me I had bad teeth. We all thought we were going to be models, Luke. You just were the only one that made it. So congratulations on that. Yeah, man, good work. <laughs> you smell terrific. <laughs> he just looks like he boat. smells good, right? You can't even tell, yeah. but he's. So I want to ask you a couple of things. I got, no. some, I got some questions, not about fighting. Well, actually, first, I want to get your opinion on just a couple more fighting questions, and that's it. I know you've been talking about fighting for so long. What's your take on Nganu and JDS? Ah, uh, man, that's a, that'll be a fun fight. That's a crazy See, fight, huh? Uh, you, can't, you can't really get hit by Nganu. Yeah. So, I don't know. JDS has been getting hit a little bit. His last fight, he looked good, but he's like, but he's been, but he's been hit a few times, and uh, it's a little different when you're fighting Francis. You can't really get hit. So uh, I was, I was, you know, as much as I'd like to favor the uh, JDS, I think Francis has is, is got a got a significant advantage with just the power advantage, and you know, I think he's he's letting it go these days. He's not he's not so hesitant after his last loss. You know, the first loss he had. So. He found his, his looseness and his confidence back, and so we'll see. We'll see what happens, but that's going to be a fun one to watch. Yeah, that's going to be a good one, too. And I know you've said this before. You're picking, obviously, Jones over Santos. I mean, how do you think that fight's going to go as far as – actually, more more importantly, I know you already picked Jones in this fight. Do you think that's the best opponent for Jones right now? I mean, it, it makes some sense right now. Obviously, just the division is not – it's in that weird state. Obviously, Alexander Gustafsson's out. He's not coming back for a while. He's lost twice, and – and uh, I'm, I haven't made my presence felt yet, so. <laughs> That's obviously what you're eyeing. You want Jones. I guess he'll do. He'll do for the time being. You know, and I'll, I'll go, I'll make a statement piece off the guy that he got, you know, he beat to get a title shot. So I'll we'll do something. We'll yeah. do a little bit more. And I'll do a little fight, bit more uh, myself. Rockhold versus uh, Blackowitz. How's that going down? I'm walking right through this motherfucker. <laughs> I'm picking first round submission you, so. I don't really submit people these days. I just kind of take the life out of them. I, I found it. This is a, it's a efficient. new division for you. I'm, I've got a new uh, a new feeling about this fight. So. I got a feeling. I, I mean, got to have you win. I'll appreciate it. <laughs> it's gonna be good, man. I I I've, I've you know I'm not. I feel different. I feel it's different. The weight, the strength, the power. I'm coming forward, and I'm gonna I'm gonna let myself be felt. I'm gonna I'm gonna put it on these guys, early and often, and quick, short, and to the point. I nice. hear you, man. I'm excited nice. to see it at 205. Honestly, you're such a big 185er. Um, I got to get into a little bit about this, Anthony uh, Anthony Smith. <laughs> he seems to be really yeah. really upset Why every time so you say anything. He gets so angry so at everything angry. Luke says. It's absolutely unbelievable. Why is he so upset about it? I mean, am I missing something? Is there something that was said in the beginning that like really started this, or is it just the back and forth banter's know. got him that shook up? <laughs> I don't. I have, I have no idea how it got so far. You know, I think I just I said what I said about the kid. I didn't really think too much about him. Thank you. Oh, no, you service for smile. I'll take that right. Hey, Sarah. Hey. <laughs> um. <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I just kind of called it out, saw what I saw, and said it like it was, you know. I, I don't think too much of the guy. 
and uh, I think he's sloppy. I think he's overrated. I don't think he was really ready for obviously the uh, the big stage. He couldn't handle you know a few things I said about him, and then he just went off on the ramp. So I, I, you know, as much as I would like to uh, silence the kid. No room. There's no real reason even talking about it because he's about to get. He's about to get put off the map after this Gustafsson fight. He ain't gonna really mean much of anything to me after that. I think he's, he's got a short-lived career. Well, hey, uh, can you show us what are you eating there? Um, I'm indulging today. I have a little Caesar salad and a uh, a W burger and some bacon. Huh. Looks pretty scrumptious. <laughs> <laughs> Looks good. Well played. Shit. You know, it was light heavyweight style, you know? Yeah, I was about to say. Get the burger. I still incorporate the salad, but, you know, you got to eat the burger. You'll eat that last. Oh, so I mentioned a couple more things real fast about you instead of talking about fighting all the time. I just want to know what your favorite – well, I had a couple things listed down. What is your favorite food? Obviously, you have a burger in front of you. It's, <laughs> it's probably going to be yeah. high on the list. What good is segue. your favorite food? I'm just trying to get this for the, the casual fans that want to know Luke Rockhold, the polo model, and the person. Uh, favorite food um, bacon is hard to beat bacon I like pork pork belly oh nice like a good good pork belly it's, it's something that's just unbeatable in life I think agreed alright and your favorite TV show are you into Game of Thrones and all that or do you have any other TV show that you like uh I, I never really got into the Game of Thrones what I really liked was uh, Peaky Blinders was awesome. Oh, nice. I was a big fan of Peaky Blinders and uh, obviously Narcos. Narcos, you can never go wrong with some Narcos. And your favorite vacation spot. And that leads me also into when you come back to Thailand. It yeah. doesn't have to be Thailand, but if it is, well, it is. when are you coming back to see us? I need more time in Thailand. Yeah, I, I know. do need more time. It was a, a three-day bonanza. Mr. Yeah, it was. Took, took me on quite the tour. It was, it was awesome. <laughs> so, yeah, it was. And I missed you by Island, one Island, day. Island's up on there on my list that I need to get back. I and mean, we got to go to Bangkok too. And yeah, you got to experience the real. We'll just do the whole the country. Depths, the depths of the culture. We'll do the whole country, man. But you just got to come after your fight. Take a week or two off and come hang out. Hundred percent. We'll make that happen. Yeah, you I'm haven't heard. You haven't heard about Patea yet. That's somewhere special too. I don't even want to go to Patea. Yeah, it's terrible. It's so it's so horrible. You got to go. That sounds right up my alley. <laughs> sounds, like, sounds like a summer venture. Alley, what? All right, before you go, real fast, I know you got to eat. I got a, a new little segment called uh, Headline News in Thailand. You have to tell me if it's fact or if it's fiction. So I'm going to give you a headline story, a, a headline, and you tell me if we made it up or it's an actual headline in Thailand. All right, you got it. Okay. You ready to play? All right, the first one. Two lady boys, two lady boys arrested for stealing a wallet on Walking Street. Is that fact or fiction? Oh, fact, hundred <laughs> percent. That's fact. <laughs> All right, you're one to know. That's good. You're, that's fact. Okay, you got that one right. All right, number two, lady Probably boy. Three or four of them. I don't know about two. <laughs> All right, here we go. Listen, you ready? Lady boy arrested yeah. after threatening, and I quote: "The first opportunity I get, I'm going to drill a hole through Luke Rockhold's face." <laughs> the, the fake ones could be based on real news just not thailand news yeah i mean he's pretty much a lady boy so yeah <laughs> i'm not saying you're a lady boy anthony smith i don't know this story. is that true anthony smith said that uh i'm going to drill a hole oh, through luke face. i thought it was when y'all were here okay. well, so i i Said a lady boy arrested. Well, he'd fight you in the fifth aisle of Walmart. So, which, yeah. okay, good, good job. So you got that one. Okay, number, number three, king cobra female caught in Patong, thirty eggs missing from the nest. Now, is that made up or is that a real headline? I would say real. Damn, he's good, man. That's a real headline. A king cobra female caught in Patong, thirty eggs missing. That's a headline in Thailand. Well, you got to give him one that's a wrong headline. I did already. Well, but he's heard that. Before. Okay, number. Number four. Former UFC. Remember when we, remember we went when we fought King Cobras, Mike? Yeah, I do. I remember you laughing at me when I was in there getting bit. Real nice guy <laughs> yeah. you are. 
Appreciate that. Let's do it, Mike. Come on. <laughs> that was a uh, last headline. Luke, former UFC bantamweight champion, builds octagon container to live off the coast of Thailand for the rest of his life in peace. <laughs> <laughs> that is a, a legend. I've heard. I'm not even sure if it's true. It's such a legendary story. Okay, it's made up. You're right, but. And that is actually based on a real Thailand headline. A guy actually built an 8x8 eight eight meter octagon container, and he's living on it to not pay taxes off the coast of Thailand, 42, 42 kilometers. Yes. And then he got caught, and 300 Thai Navy soldiers, whatever, or seamen, went out and removed him, and they're seamen. on the hunt for him right now. That's actually true. Fun fact, he's a millionaire from Bitcoin, so he's trying to screw the government over by, like, $11 a week. So, uh <laughs> Yeah. Hey, bonus question though, and this is this is not a yes or no. A Thai woman calls the equivalent of the emergency hotline of nine one one in America two thousand times in one month. How much was she fined? Oh my god, eleven dollars. <laughs> Close. Close. Three dollars. Three fucking dollars. <laughs> How are you not here, Luke? Come on, we can't. We can't. It's amazing here, man. All right, what else you got, Luke? You got anything else, buddy? Anything else you want to say that you haven't said on the million other podcasts that you do every day or news agencies uh, and real news channels? Yeah, I, think, I think we cover the map. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep eating. I'm right. going to keep uh, keep grounding away, and then uh, we're going to go let ourselves be heard. B before I'm, you go, uh, Luke, before you go, December 18th is Luke Rockhold Day in Santa Cruz. Yes, it is. What uh, what exactly goes on on that day? I, I can't be talking about that. <laughs> <laughs> Best right. answer of the night. It's a good answer. Well good played, answer. buddy. All right, buddy. So we'll let you get back to your food. Obviously, good luck in your fight with Jan. Um, I know you're going to do well. Can't wait to see you at 205, buddy. It's going to be great. Um, I know you're going to do really good. So you got us cheering for you here at AK Thailand. We're going to be watching the entire gym in our cafe. We'll be looking forward to you coming here afterwards, hopefully, taking a little time for yourself and for us. So uh, good luck in your fight, buddy. UFC 239, uh, it's July 6th. Yeah. Luke Rockhold versus Jan Blackowitz. Tell that waitress Sarah we said hi. I know her from my time in Florida. She's a lovely lady. You'll enjoy her. <laughs> see you boys all right Later, take man. care everybody i'll see you all right luke rockhold man nice to have him back on the show huh always a pleasure always good to talk to luke yes i agree and i will say mm -hmm. i know it doesn't mean much to the outside world but in my heart he was like oh i don't want you stealing my job from polo or something I, yeah maybe uh he he actually looked like he was serious yeah well i mean you know, model I mean, not that you shouldn't be. I mean, I, I, of yeah, course, I, I think you look great too. And I don't uh, know that we were almost going to be dressed the same. You see the glasses? Yeah, I see that. <laughs> I yeah. see that. The difference is, mine are four dollars. His are probably four hundred fifty dollars. Yeah, probably. So, uh, if not more. Yeah. Man, it's crazy. A polo blue model, UFC fighter, top ranked. I mean, he's you know he's he's doing really mm -hmm. good. He was a champ. And Luke Rockhold. <laughs> I thought we we're doing me again. <laughs> oh yeah, All right, my mistake. And uh, yeah, it's a good life, huh? Yeah, it looks like, uh, you know, um, we've never had somebody order food on the podcast no. before. That's a first. Hey, and he, he didn't eat it right away, so that's good. He gave hey, us a little bit of time. kind of had his salad. I guess he was picking out a salad, so yeah, maybe. he did eat it first. I think we said he's going to eat it last, but, but yeah, man, good for him, man. Living a good life. Um, I didn't know it was that easy. I would have gone to more UFC fights of yours if Polo would just pick me out of the crowd. Yeah, interesting, huh? I guess you got to be good looking. And, and you got what I was saying about walking around the mall or whatever it was when we were kids. Does that happen everywhere, you think, or just us? Just not to us. Or, like, that happened to us? No, I mean, when we're, you're walking around and that, what you were calling it, that, uh, what's it called? Oh, no, I thought you meant, because I went with a friend. No, I did too. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, and we, we I, didn't get picked. Oh, or we God, did, no. and they said to pay for something, I think. It was. Oh, well, of course, there's always those, but. But is that <laughs> just us, or does that happen all no, over I, the world? You're <laughs> all over the country, I guess, like that. No, it's, yeah, it's every mall in the you, world. You walk around and they say, okay, you and but you. I, there was a legit model search in 1998, yeah, model search. and I went with a girl. Um, doesn't matter her name, <laughs> but uh, and so I'm just there for just support, yeah. you know, just because she didn't want to go by herself. And I'm I'm standing there, and this old lady must have been 90, yeah. And she walks to me. She's like, uh, "Are you trying out?" I was like, "No." She goes, "Okay, good, because you have bad teeth." I was like, "Holy fuck, you old whore!" Like, 
you know, what do I do? She's a hundred. You know, <laughs> wow. I was like, wow. Like I'm, I was like, I'm just there just as a moral support. And she, those were her exact words to me. You have bad teeth. I mean, I wow. get it. That's why I didn't sign up. And this I'm, is in Texas. I'm like, what about you? What are you going to model? Dirt? <laughs> Coffins? You old fuck. But I held my breath, which she can't do. She's dead by now. Yeah. Yeah. She's dead by now. <laughs> Jesus. So, fuck her. Well, Let that, it that out, was bro. rude. I didn't know it was going to hit such a sour grape. Yeah, let's not talk about that anymore. All right. <laughs> <laughs> wow. All right, buddy. Well, back to Luke Rockhold. Yeah. Not your childhood trauma. Well, I was technically an adult. But what do you? What is your prediction for the fight? As far as what do you see happening? The I, actual prediction, the round, and how he's. Well, like win. I said, I you know, and there I, I told him I, I really do think it's to be a first round uh, uh, submission. Yeah. Because it's been a while for him, and it's a new division. So, again, I have zero fight experience, as you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, definitely zero win experience. <laughs> but I just feel like maybe he's going to re- resort back to maybe, okay, it's a new weight class, new fight, my first time. Maybe joke him out. Because he's phenomenal on the ground. Yeah, he he's is. He's unbelievable. So, and not taking anything away from Jan. I mean, he's a great fighter, oh, of too. Course. Of course. And it just goes back to what I said. And I'm biased. It's my friend. I'm not going to sit there and say that, you know, I'm not biased. I am. But I am, like, like 100% honest with you. Like, or the people there is watching this show. Man, it, he's way better than like you think. And so when you yeah. underestimate him, I see people sometimes talking shit and saying something if he got knocked out by somebody or got beat by somebody. But it's like he really is a fucking phenomenal well, fighter. Like man. I said, when I, he when really you're is getting, a phenomenal fighter. When like you, completely well rounded. When you were getting uh, ready for 189, mm-hmm. um, we went to San Jose for. Ooh, I trained with him. What about two weeks, I guess? Yeah. And you've, you know, you're good at the ground. Don't get me wrong. You know, I mean, all the guys in there are phenomenal, but he was actually just throwing them all around, no matter what weight. Me too. No matter what size. Yeah. He well, slaughtered me. Well, I know. I didn't. <laughs> Yeah, no. My confidence was garbage, was shit. I was about to say shit. Was shit going in that fight. It was. Uh, Thanks, Luke. The dude is so fucking phenomenal on the ground. It's like. Yeah. So hopefully, you know, he'll uh, message me back on Instagram because I messaged him like four years ago and I got nothing. Oh, so nice. hopefully he'll message me back and say, like, you know what? You were right, man. First round submission. Nice. So we'll see what happens. It's not, it's not just. You, you say people are good, but usually when you train with people and they're good, don't what I'm saying, like me, people in general. Uh, they're good in the way that you assume they're good, right? You go with the BJJ black belt, you mm. get him with a gi, and, and you're grappling. He's good. Yeah, he's good at what he does. But Luke is like a different type of good. So when you roll with him or you you spar with him or you train with him, it's a different style. He has a very different style than what you expect and what uh, everyone else has. He has a, he's a very unique style to his own body frame. Well, so he, like, he's six foot five. He's, uh, six five, right? I think like six, six four. Uh, I'm taller. I don't think he's six five. I'm yeah. taller. Than he's like six, I gave him an inch four. or two. You know? But he's like tall, and he's got a, a very unique body that, or, or a unique style to fit his body. So he's doing like reverse figure four. He's, he's wrapping his legs around you all different ways. It's just a whole different style. So well, it's like, good, but you can't even figure you know, it out. Like I said, now that I'm just obviously a fan, but now that I'm actually kind of involved in the business a little bit, you know, and mm-hmm. see it, we've had the Leo Santos. Yeah. We've had the, you know, Noguera, mm-hmm. you know, Marcio at the gym right now. But when I saw Luke, I was like, man, this is like unfair. I mean, he's that good in my eyes. I think you know, mm. as far as in person, he's the best I've ever seen. So, yeah, that's why I'm. Yeah. That's why I need. And we this sound like the Luke submission. bandwagon, but it's true, yeah. man. I'm not hey, lying. Well, yeah. look at me. I'm, you know, <laughs> looking good. Yeah, I look like a huge douchebag, don't I? No, nah, you're all right. You know how uncomfortable yeah, this towel, do. this popped collar, and this hair is. It's kind of hot in here too. This is Thailand. I thought you were about to say it's, it's kind of hot. If you just can you edit it where he just says it's kind of hot. It's kind of hot. Thanks, Thanks buddy. Period. Done. Wow. Your car's not even popped anymore. Or it used to be. Well, it's lonely. It's not even strong enough to stay up. That polo shirt is so fucking old. No, it's just never been it's a falling down. Look, it's already fallen it's back down. It's because it's been ironed, and <laughs> that polo shirt won't even stay popped. That was before being popped was cool for shirts. This is not true. This hundred. Look at I bought that, this dude. This morning, it's fallen down again. That's bad, man. Wow, that's vintage, though. I think it's my dad's. Hey, for Thailand, for Thailand, and and one day notice that Luke was going to do the podcast. Not bad, dude. Man, not again. Bad. Blue polo. Yeah, you did. Yeah. <laughs> polo blue. And then a blue water polo ball. What was the best gift I ever gave you, though? Your friendship. One of the coolest, uh, aside that. The polo blue with Luke Rockhold's message. Oh, well, yeah. Oh, I thought, I thought we were going deeper than that. No. Right? I'm like, yeah. I don't go too deep on the podcast. Well, I've got I'm it on my Instagram. Crying. Uh, for those who don't know, it's actually kind of cool. Can we put it on here? Yeah. Where Luke. Uh, oh, maybe we'll put the video. Yeah. yeah. He um he wished me a Merry Christmas in his own special way, which you obviously coerced him to do. And then you bought me the... You uh, had to pay him a lot of money to do that. That's fine. That's yeah. fine. As long as it didn't come out of my pocket, I really don't give a fuck. It did. 
<laughs> but uh, no, I know. Remember when you lost that bonus? I wonder how you get that bonus. <laughs> that's what it went oh, to. Oh, that's another it's story. It's not my fucking Christmas. It was yours. Oh, half deal, huh? Mm, yeah. Yeah, but no, I appreciate it, you know. And uh, so appreciate you got, the, Luke, you got the polo blue, and you got the polo blue model wishing you a Merry Christmas or whatever it was. Yeah. It was a birthday or Christmas. I bet it was a dude, but yeah. Merry Christmas, Mark. <clears throat> Welcome to the polo blue family. Where it is around town, you need it. Happy smells. God bless you. Happy New Year. Enjoy. It was Christmas? It was Christmas. Oh, okay. All right. Four months ago, buddy. It Tomorrow was... it'll be four months. Really? Yeah. God, my head is gone, You need dude. to get a calendar or something. Him and along the whole other team kicked me in the head so many years, bro. That's what happens. <laughs> you can block that I'm, shit. Dude, brain cells are falling out of my ears. All right. All right. So, yeah. So, Luke Rockhold, Jan Blackovitz. Blackovitz? Yeah. Is that how you say it? UFC 239. 239, probably, July 6th, right? July 6th. I, yeah. I know probably every two weeks it sounds like it's the biggest card of the year. This is an amazing card. This is break that down for a second. Not break down. Talk about the card. So I we mean, got John Jones versus Santos. Yeah. Well, yes. And then Holly Holm versus Nunes. Crazy fight. And then Ningano versus JSD. Crazy fight. And Askren's fighting somebody I don't even fucking know. Diego Sanchez is on there. Obviously. Masvidal. Oh, there you go. Yeah. I mean, Crazy I've fight. lost track. Like I said, and then Masvidal you know, wants to kill him. Rockhold. Yeah. I mean, how many ex-champions and crazy. champions are on that thing? That's one of the best cards coming up for sure. So, yeah. yeah. July 6th. Yep. True. So we'll stay tuned for that, and we'll do a recap show, a good one for that yes. show. Yes. Yeah. And as always, I want to thank our sponsors, Starfish Concept, June Yu. June Yu's got a new book out. Yes. Phenomenal woman, phenomenal book. Have you read it? From I have not, because it's in Mandarin, which I'm a little rusty on, and it's from page 206 to 1. Oh, okay. So... <laughs> I don't go that route, you know, so. So, uh, yeah, check out Starfish Concepts, you and you, uh, PR marketing firm, absolutely amazing, D- um, doing a lot of stuff in not only Asia, around the world now, sponsoring fighters, doing events. Oh, it's been so good to us for years. Absolutely. So. And then AK Thailand, our main sponsor, has been really good to us for years. No. Yeah. And uh, anything updated there? Uh, just uh, maybe some accommodations are getting built, maybe some other ventures going on, maybe some fight news. I mean, uh, it's it's. Tough to uh, tough to say in one podcast, but um, I'm actually really excited about what the future holds for us, Michael. That's very good. I, I love putting you on the spot like that, and you did very well. We have no updates, but you did a great job of like... That's a little teaser. Yeah, good job, buddy. A little teaser. You're getting better. I think you do better with glasses on. Yes. You should be sitting where this towel is so I can carry you. I bet it's nice and cool over there. It is beyond hot. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks, guys, for tuning in. We'll see you next time. No. Yeah. Sorry. What's up, everybody? I am here in Thailand. This is the first time I've ever been here. Been dying to come here for years. The great Mike Swick. He's one of the big reasons he's been trying to pull me down here. What he built down here, AKA Thailand, is incredible. There's people here from all over the world. You can train mixed martial arts here, jiu-jitsu. They have weightlifting, they have cardio, and obviously they have Muay Thai, boxing, everything. I'm telling you guys, I know everybody wants to go to Thailand because Thailand's so cool, but you can't come to Thailand without coming to AKA Thailand. Come on.